Hello, welcome back to my channel. How are we doing? Happy Monday. Starting off another one of these weekly vlogs and I am in a chatty mood. Honestly, what am I not? But wanted to talk about what the plan is for this week. Also to share something kind of random that's been on my mind for the past day as I have been trying to create like new graphics and like transitions for the vlogs. First up, let's talk about what we're doing this week. I don't have any super wild plans. I have a video that I'm working on today that I need to get finished that basically involves me reading half of a book or listening to half of an audiobook and then reading Daydream by Hannah. Anna Grace. This is for my August new release video that's going live on the main channel in a few days. Um, you'll see that one before you see this one, I believe. And then I also need to work on Hayden's taste test, which is going to go live Sunday. Fingers crossed. I don't know for sure if that's going to happen because those books are so freaking long, but I don't really have any video that I can replace that one with or like switch around with that one. So that's probably what we're going to be doing. We'll see. I will report back. I may or may not like switch out a video here or there, but those are like the like worky things that I've got going on. I also have my dermatologist appointment tomorrow. That should be interesting. I've kind of rethought some things. I'm honestly mostly going for a mole removal, not because I think it's cancerous, just because it's been irritating me. But it hasn't actually been irritating me that much over the past little while. And I'm kind of like, if there's nothing else I want to biopsy, like I might just skip getting this one biopsied this time. Cause I'm like, I just want to be able to get started on my 75 hard journey next week, but it's fine. It's fine. I've got my Durham appointment tomorrow. And then this weekend, Hayden is going to be building me some shelves for our pantry. So that is going to be fun. I'll, I will be able to have some like, I was going to say cathartic, cathartic is not the right word, relaxing painting time. I need to paint the shelf that he builds for our pantry and I can do some organization in there, which should be fun. Our pantry is like a great size for all of the food products that we have, but the shelving is just like not really that well optimized for or the amount of space in there. Like there's big dead empty space at the top. There are definitely things that we don't reach for quite as often, like our baking products. And we could definitely use more room for our like snacks and grab and go stuff. So excited to be able to kind of like reorganize in there. I, I did say I was going to get chatty though. This is like such a stupid problem. And I don't know if it's something that everybody will be able to relate to because part of it has to do with like being a creator. But I also think this just kind of like extends out to people who are kind of chronically online. I have been trying to create some like new graphics and some new fonts for my thumbnails, things like that. And as I was like searching, I was just really faced again with the fact that I do not feel like I have an aesthetic. I don't feel like I have a really strong sense of identity in terms of what I like aesthetically because I kind of just like everything. I feel like the stuff that I like tends to, I don't want to say compete with each other, but like, I don't know. I cannot pick an aesthetic to save my life. I really cannot. Not in every aspect of my life. Like I feel like I'm starting to nail down what I really love about my home and home aesthetic. And I'm like slowly starting to kind of transform areas of my home to kind of match that aesthetic. I have no idea what like my personal style is. I don't think I've ever really sat down and thought about it much or tried to, I don't know, build a wardrobe that actually reflects the things that I enjoy. I've kind of just been wearing oversized t-shirts when I work from home. Just like never actually explored my personal style. And again, that like kind of extends out to the rest of the internet. Like it can be kind of hard as a creator. And this is not me saying that being a creator is hard, but let me put that out there. It's not that hard. It can be kind of hard. I think sometimes build a like consistent brand, if you will. People aren't brands, but like obviously when you go to someone's YouTube channel and everything like looks the same, you can pretty much immediately pick them on what they're throwing down, right? Looking at this one creator yesterday, I think her channel is like Cozy K or something like that. She's adorable. Her channel, warm, kind of like beiges and browns and oranges. She has cozy hobbies. She likes cozy games. Like I could tell instantly from looking at her channel, like what it's all about. And I love that. Like I just, I have so much respect for people who like know what they're about and are really good at marketing themselves because I just feel like I do not have that skill. I think maybe at the beginning of my first YouTube channel, I had more of that skill. Maybe thought I had an idea of who I was. I'm not that person anymore. I know that for sure. I definitely just have no idea who the hell I am. And I feel like that could be hard. It could just be hard to market yourself. It could also be hard for like your actual sense of identity. Like I don't think that people need to pigeonhole themselves. Like obviously we're all complex individuals. I'm not saying that if I decide that I have, I don't know, boho style that I need to wear boho clothes every day. Like I don't think that that's necessarily how people should operate, but it would be nice to to just know who I am, to have a beautiful sense of style and like get to wear that every day. God, I'm like thinking of so many people that I follow that that are like this. Like off the top of my head, people I'm thinking of, Tasha, Tasha Polis, a cosplayer and a costume designer and just like, she has such a distinct vibe. Reagan from Peru's Project definitely has sort of like a mid-century like cozy aesthetic that I just, I mean, she knows who she is. There's just so many people I follow online that like just know who they are and I'm just so envious and I wish that that was me. Um, and that is something that I wanna work on like as I, you know, continue to get more comfortable with myself and my body, you know, hopefully like going on this journey to like figure out who I am aesthetically. But it's like in the meantime, what if I don't have the clothes to match what I feel like I am inside? I wish that I like knew enough about myself to know like how I could market myself, if that makes sense, like how I could show who I am. 
that sounds so corny and silly, I'm sure. And obviously none of this like truly, truly matters. But it is something that comes up every time I feel like I need to, you know, make new stuff for my channel and I get excited to do it. I feel like I get this like decision fatigue and like overwhelm because I'm like, God, is this font really like <laughs> who I am inside? That's so stupid. I want people to come here and be like, you know, Chandler is, uh, she real? She knows who she is. And do I know who I am? I, I certainly do not. So I, I don't think I'm giving those vibes off at the moment. But the only thing, the only vibes I feel like I'm giving off, you know, presently are lazy, white millennial, suburban, vibes and, and you know that might be accurate that might be accurate but i wish it was <laughs> i wish that i had a true a true aesthetic a true vibe i think to say stylistically uh, i will be going on like an actual style journey on this channel like that is something that i hope to do but um maybe in the meantime i can figure out something i think maybe that's the problem too it's like i always complain that my vlogs aren't aesthetic enough but like how can one be aesthetic one does not have an aesthetic oh i love how that bronzer didn't really make me look bronze it just made my forehead look dirty but it is the problem with bronzer i will say as a pale person i don't think it looks looks really good on me, but if I don't wear it, it's not good either. Eventually one day I'm gonna buy that Westman Atelier bronzer stick that I really want. That's only when I can, uh, overcome the idea of paying like 60 70 dollars for a little stick of product this is definitely derailed i don't know if any of that is like at all relatable but i feel like it has to be right i was talking to my sister about this you know she's not a creator but she's definitely chronically online like i am i feel like she can kind of relate maybe less so i feel like she has more of an aesthetic sense than i do but it could be hard being online and i feel like there's kind of a pressure too to like have an aesthetic to have a particular way to look not even from like a you know it's easier to market yourself perspective but on tiktok too you see all these girls like cat core really show who you are as a person huh? I honestly don't know. I do not know who I am as a person. What? Fuck. I wish I could find that TikToker video. Someone saying that the reason that there are such a influx of these cores and aesthetics is because now people don't really have identities. Like ballet core used to just be people did ballet and that's the way they dressed because they were ballerinas. <laughs> How you dressed <laughs> reflected what you do. Whether it's like dressing in workwear because you go to an office or like, you know, that sort of thing. People just don't have those things anymore. Maybe that's my problem. Maybe I need to get a fucking life. I'm gonna finish my makeup. <laughs> then I'm gonna figure out my breakfast. I honestly don't. I do know what today is gonna look like. I do know what today is gonna look like. I was going to say, I don't know what I'm doing today. I do. I'm reading those two books. I'm editing that video. I'm gonna feel so good about it. I also need to put together a thumbnail for last week's vlog. That is one thing that I am determined to get right over the next like month or two is my thumbnails. Obviously they're gonna evolve over time. I do really need to be better about thumbnails. There's something that I don't think of during the week. And then by the end of the week, I'm trying to like screenshot random things and put together a thumbnail. And it's just, they're always lazy. Let's be real. They're lazy and like I wouldn't I wouldn't want to click on them you know that's my point that's my point there's no aesthetic so I wouldn't click I don't blame you for not clicking okay but I need to work on that that's something I can I can work on now <laughs> even not knowing my aesthetic but there we go I will be back when I have something to say hopefully less rambly bullshit than than this all right friends ignore the weird shadows I'm sitting under a tree I just had dinner and I just got done with a Pilates class I don't think that we need a clap but I would like to point out that I started my period today. Cramps are fucking brutal, but I went. I went to Pilates. I'm like really proud of myself. I will say that is the one thing I really love about Pilates as a movement. Like it's one of the only things that I would probably agree to do on my cycle. Granted, if I weren't going to a dermatology appointment tomorrow, I still would probably go and lift weights just depending on how my cramps are. But not only is my period regular, ish i mean like we'll see you know this first cycle has been regular we'll see if like the next one uh continues on in that same vein but cramps have actually kind of decreased as well and i noticed that actually during my last period the cramps and the bleeding were not as bad as they normally are and i'm feeling that way again this time also noticing a quicker ramp up which is really nice i don't know about y'all like if you have pcos or endo or whatever for a long time my cycles and my periods in particular were very long like seven plus days of heavy heavy bleeding and i feel like i got cramps multiple days before for my period and was just like, when is this gonna start? Like cramps with no blood, like what is this? Um, but my past two cycles only really had cramps like the day of, maybe the day before, just like a little bit. Oh, that has been actually like pretty nice. I mean like cramps suck, but they've been a lot milder, a lot less blood. I'm just like, what is this? So I'm not also not trying to like equate PCOS and endo, by the way. I just do know that, you know, endo does uh, have pelvic pain and can have painful periods. So anyway, it feels pretty nice. I'm not gonna lie to not like feel like total shit. Although, you know, still not like loving it. I do want to go curl up with my heating pad when I get home and I'm gonna read Daydream by Hannah Grace. Actually just finished Haunted Ever After. So I'm making good time, uh, but I want to give myself ample time to read Daydream so that I can edit that video today as well. I could technically edit it tomorrow, but I think it would just be really nice to like knock that shit out and then have the whole week ahead of me work on Sunday's video. Again, I don't really know what the fuck that's gonna be. I still have not figured that out. So kind of kicking myself because I told myself that I was going to like 
like create um you know more transitions and more like branding type stuff while i was listening to haunted ever after i can't do it while reading daydream because like i'm gonna be reading it physically with my hands that's okay i did actually get the thumbnail done for this weekly vlog and i think it looked pretty cute so like y'all let me know i guess if you liked last week's thumbnail maybe this week's thumbnail will be better i have no idea i need to just like keep it in the little noggin okay like during the week chandler like take pretty pictures of things for thumbnails <laughs> All right, everybody, got your clapping hands. I do not have melanoma. I would get out my clapping hands, but I had to take mine away because they were covered in melanoma. Didn't think we were gonna be making skin cancer jokes. Skin cancer is serious and go get your skin checks, okay? I think I've already true. said that in this vlog, but actually- like, I never have. He really fucking needs to go. He, he's the kind of man who like will forget to wear sunscreen when he mows the lawn. It has about 15 million freckles. My skin uh -huh. check, let me say, for the record, took maybe two minutes, maybe. I don't have like any sort of like raised- That's not what a mole is, babe. It doesn't have to be raised. Oh, I know. Wrong. I don't even know what I could compare that to. Oh, tortilla's not like this. Not as spotty. It does look like the bottom bun of the last Big Mac I have, though. Well, I just wanted to pop in. I haven't talked to y'all today. Uh, I was busy reading Daydream by Hannah Grace and finishing my vlog, which I did get sent off to the sponsor, which I feel good about. Again, I talked about this shit last week. I'm posting a Thursday video this week, which I'm trying not to do going forward on the main channel, or at least, like, not often. I only want to do it when I want to do it, you know? You can expect, after this month, Thursday videos, if they're ever on the main channel. They're just fun time videos okay like that's not sponsored mm -hmm. stuff that's just like a girl wanted to post okay um i mean to be fair i at least want to post whatever just like i get to do it but anyway got that video done feeling good feeling good about it um not feeling good uterine sense um day two is just always quite an adventure got some flooding down in the basement you know i haven't been doing my morning <laughs> walks lately i have been very consistent i've worked out seven days a week for the past couple weeks um, today I said, you know what? It's okay if I don't lift. And that's because since I didn't have any spots, I think I've told y'all this, I didn't have anything that they wanted to biopsy. I was like, you know what? I'm just not going to get the raised mole on my back removed. It would be cosmetic anyway, because it hasn't been bothering me that much lately. It bothered me a couple of months ago because I think it like got irritated by a bra strap. Just don't wear bras, I think is the answer. I don't. <laughs> well, I have been wearing more sports bras. My last mole that I got removed like a couple of years ago, it was sports bras that were irritating it. Mm -hmm. This one is like farther in to my back it's, so regular, it's like real bras real bras yeah. yeah so i just don't wear real bras and we're fine um, but that means i can do 75 hard next monday very i'm genuinely like hyped for it and i thought about perhaps starting this week but i was like no nah, let's like let's start on a monday let's start clean let's start fresh that was my intention <laughs> so you're gonna be seeing this on a tuesday i will be one day into 75 hard and you can join me i'm also going to post in the community tab so you can see that ahead of time if, again if you want to join me i know one of you commented and was interested in joining me so um if more of you want to or like do 75 soft or i don't know I give you your accountability What's buddy. 75 saw? It's like just whatever you want it to be. It's like okay. modified version of 75 hard because people want to take on these challenges, but they don't want to do like the hardcore version. And I get that. Mm -hmm. That won't be my journey because that's just not who I am as a person, but I respect the fuck out of it. I could do 75 hard <laughs> minus the like reading a certain amount of nonfiction every day. It's only 10 pages. That's like a whole hour for me. We're we talking about, does it have to be out of a physical book? Yes. No audiobooks. Yeah, no, I'm out. I can't read. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's actually the deal breaker for me. That's so. Because what's the rest of it like? Okay, stick to your uh, let's stick talk to your about diet. Okay, two 45 minute workouts, one of which has to be outside. Mm -hmm. Take a selfie every day. Take a gallon of water every day. Read 10 pages of a nonfiction book. Stick to a diet of some kind. It could be anything you want. For me, if anyone was curious, I am doing hitting my protein goal every day and staying in my calorie deficit every day. So that shouldn't be too bad. Hitting my protein goal is like kind of hard. I did like kind of readjust my macros recently just to bring my protein down just a little bit. It's still pretty high, but it's not like intense, you know? It's like very doable. Help me build that muscle that I'm trying to keep building i was really like feeling myself though i have to say on sunday in my pilates class i was like i think for me my like diet that i would need to stick to is like making sure i eat enough calories every day <laughs> he gets way too caught up with work i get caught up with like Life. anything and like just, i'll just yeah. forget to eat lunch specifically and like most of the time i don't eat breakfast so then that means that i sometimes will only eat dinner not the same person i say that i will say ever since being in a calorie deficit i wouldn't say i have the same exact issue but i do find myself sometimes like pushing my breakfast later into the day because i'm like mm -hmm. oh i'm not starving in the morning like i can just wait to eat whereas before i would probably just eat without really thinking about my hunger cues i've gotten a lot more in tune with my hunger cues i think mm -hmm. since doing this i don't I 
I never starve myself and I definitely don't let myself get faint, but I feel like I try to strike that balance of like, okay, let's like get, let's get hungry before we eat again, but not so hungry that I will like binge or eat too much. It's actually been really great. I think it's like helped me kind of relearn some things. Yeah. See, that's what I do. Except for sometimes I ignore my hunger. I'll be hungry. Like my stomach will be yeah, growling. And but you're I'm like busy like, and you yeah, just don't do it yet. I get it. Through. It's funny you mentioned that. I was actually going to bring up your little fidget toys and how we had like that conversation. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> a couple of fidget toys because I was hoping that they would help me stop messing with my cuticles. I used to like actually pick my fingernails. I don't do that anymore. My nails themselves are good, but I still have a bad habit of at my like cuticles and like the skin around my nails. I was hoping that that would help me. That being said, I got them in the mail today. I went to show you just, we had like a very interesting conversation where I didn't realize that you fidget like ever. So we are both neurodivergent, which I don't talk about often. I was having this conversation with a friend recently. They have their own like mental health stuff going on. I have my own mental health diagnoses and neurodivergence. I don't talk about it a lot online just because I don't want to ever marginalize myself, if that makes sense. Like, there's people who have, like, real things that affect their everyday and their identity, and they want to share those things and or it's important to how they, like, interact with the world. And, like, I don't feel like my stuff necessarily has a big impact on that. And, like, I don't know. It's not like I'm ashamed of it. I just personally don't feel like I'm in a place to, like, advocate for certain mm -hmm. things. You know what I mean? Like, I just don't feel comfortable with that personally. But I have my own neurodivergence. Ours, like, are pretty opposite, but I think we do share more similarities sometimes than we, like, really know. Mm -hmm. And so we were talking about, like, fidgeting. I always try to say that, like, I don't do that, but that's just, like, not true. I, like, definitely do. Yeah. But I get so annoyed by his fidgets. Oh, uh, like, it drives me fucking insane. So that's why I thought that you would just think that, like, the fidget the toys, toys were themselves were either, were like, really satisfying. either, like, annoying or, like, just, like, silly, you know? Like, yeah. oh, I don't really get what this, like, does for you, but I was just showing them to you and you were like, oh, that's actually really nice you know <laughs> I, yeah we don't they, like the same things yeah we don't like the same things so like there were parts of it that i was like yeah i think it does this but i think that's kind of stupid that doesn't do anything for me and you were like oh my god wait i that's, love it i love that my own fidgets and mine are mostly mostly silent like i do this thing with like my fingers and like my hands mm -hmm. like when i'm just like sitting by myself when it's like non-destructive it's non-destructive it's like i basically trace the outside of my cuticles with a nail if that makes sense like i go like this a lot or i do my thumbnail underneath under, your nails under each nail oh, so i'll do the ones under the nails and then i'll do like the top of the cuticle of the nails and then i'll do the sides of each nail i just have hand things i was surprised he didn't notice that i mean i've I, I, i've done that since like i'll say birth but yeah I, I like i said i think that like i've definitely noticed you do it before but i it's never struck me as a fidget for some reason like yeah for some reason it just like it i guess i haven't purposeful. really thought of it that way but it, I mean, that's what it is. It's never, it's not much of a purpose to it. Actually, I, I say that. Every once in a while, you might see me do it after I do my nails. How conscious is it? Okay. Yeah. That's what I was curious about. No, it's like pretty neat, I would say. If I'm just like by myself, or not even by myself, if I'm like with other people, I find myself doing that. If I'm on like a Zoom call or FaceTime or I'm on a phone call, I play with pens at my desk a lot. But other than that, I think that's like pretty much it. I don't have like a ton. Or I mean, I touch my hair a lot. Gotcha. That's also, I think, more just like a thick rather mm. than like a true fidget. His, Fun times. His is more tapping. He's a tapper. I'm a tapper or and a picker. picker. Picker, yeah. Yeah. It's relatable fun things. I don't know. It's kind of nice to like connect on that because we definitely have different brains. Yeah, but sometimes they kind of overlap. They do. Ways. I think that's why we like work so well together and sometimes i think about that like obviously been together for a really long time and i think in some ways we've just kind of like grown together you know it's just like it felt inevitable there wasn't like a whole lot of choices we had to make i feel like along the way to stay mm -hmm. together but it does like the older i get the more i realize like yeah we actually like work pretty well together oh yeah for like, sure. like our brain they're opposite but they're also complementary yeah like we, we definitely need the balance I'm yeah sure. they're definitely opposite in the right ways in a lot of ways yeah. and then opposite in the wrong ways in a lot of other ways yeah like his like i said his fidgets like drive me crazy for me, it's like the auditory component of them and you were like it doesn't bug me if i'm the one doing it just if someone else but i i kind of feel that yeah, like i, mean, I don't I think, think that that's like weird that yeah way, my yeah. throat i'm fine with that but when there were like people clearing their throat in yoga the other day okay but that's like a public space and like why are you like coughing at yoga i'm i don't want covid <laughs> jesus so oh, one of them was straight up coughing and i had to move yeah. my water bottle that's actually i think it's coming in the mail sometime this week maybe next week i don't know thinking about getting like a closed water bottle for fitness but i was like, I don't really need something new. Like I have a ton of Stanleys. Like there's no reason for that. I saw someone online 
by like a replacement lid that has a straw that folds down into the lid kind of like a hydro jug i guess i don't know what the fuck a hydro jug is but that's what everybody was comparing it to because that's the one thing i don't like about bringing these to like the gym or a class love the handle i don't mind it being big whack my like leg or like foot or i don't mm -hmm. i don't want that like i'm drinking out of that so that's why i like mine but yeah hayden got an, an owala i don't know if we've shown it's you. like fully like enclosed in here you know yeah it's not for me but like i'm happy that you enjoy it i just really like the the drinking mechanism yes it's very nice um also i do like this one i like to pull her out from time to time it's like laser engraved florals my sister thinks it's kind of chug and you know what that might be true but i think oh it definitely of... is she's kind of fun it's not even chuggy it's chugest they also i initially got marketed to on etsy they have one that's got like book covers on it or like a book stack which is really cute here's my thing have we talked about i love books <laughs> but i'm not really into you live laugh love book i'm not really into like the bookish lifestyle and i think maybe that's because i've been in the community so long i don't know maybe i'm jaded like i've never been someone who's really into like a ton of bookish merch or like different covers for my favorite books and stuff like i do like limited editions from time to time i like a good bookmark but like i don't want a bunch of like no, I've never subscribed to like bookish boxes for that reason. Respect it, just like not really my thing. Etsy. This was overpriced, but I like her. I don't really care. So I don't like that Stanley is making the move away from the clear lids. They have these like white frosted ones on pretty much everything now. Mm -hmm. I like the clear to see what's in my drink. It's water. It is indeed water. Reading is something that we're going to do in this vlog. I'm I don't not gonna... believe it at this rate. I was going to say, I'm not <laughs> sure what I'm going to read yet, but we're going to figure it out together. It's probably going to be more like mood reading. You read any of mine yet? <laughs> Here's the, here's the deal. Listen up. Listen up. The video was going to go live on Sunday until they told me I had to do the video that I'm posting on Thursday, uh -huh. which kind of threw all my shit off. So uh -huh. now I can't read all those books before Sunday. Like, that's just not happening, right? Uh -huh. No. So I'm going to do something easier for Sunday. And then next Sunday, I'm doing my wrap up. Yeah. So it's just gone. No, it's happening. I just don't know when. I mean, I didn't think you were going to read them all in a couple of days anyways. That was, was that your plan? It took you like multiple days to read. Which one was it? Words of Radiance? Yeah. Well, yeah, it took, I expected to do multiple days for Oathbringer, but like I expected to knock the other ones out in a day. But you conveniently forgot to tell me that all of them are like 22 hours long. They're all the books that I read, that's just how that works. So, we'll get to that eventually. I'll start reading something when I get home. Because you know what I want to do? Get in bed, put my heating pad on, put my laptop on top of my heating pad. Take 17 Advil. Oh, fuck yeah. I'm putting Say, it off. Goodbye, stomach lining. And then I'm going to listen to an audiobook while I do stuff on my computer. I love that. Honestly, I think that's what sets me apart from most uh, Gen Zers. I mean, I'm not a Gen Z, but Gen Z need to be on your phone. I'm like a laptop girl. If I can have my laptop on me, big screen for these old ass. <laughs> get the jitterbug. <laughs> Hello friends, happy Wednesday. I have world's biggest headache, but I wanted to pop in. I'm actually about to make a pizza. Would you like to see the pizza? It's this one from Walmart. Hayden and I went to Walmart last week. I don't think we showed you. We should have shown you a Walmart haul, but I really wanted to try some of the better goods, foods. I don't know. This sounds really good. It's got soprasada and bacon. Hell yeah. I was really in a pizza mood and I was this close to ordering it, but then I remembered we have this. So I'm going to do that. Eat that instead. What have I done today of import? Basically fucking nothing. It's like 2 p.m. I have been ragging ass, like not doing anything. I did, however, go back to the dermatologist today to get some cherry angiomas lasered off. Not sure if I told you I was doing that yesterday, but after my appointment, I kind of inquired and or I just think it got brought up that I could get those lasered off and um, you can google them if you want to see what they look like. It's basically red mole, I guess, and they're not cancerous. They're just like uh, uh, kind of ugly, I think. <laughs> um, I have quite a few of them on my stomach. I haven't always had them, but they have like come about in the past few years. I have some on my stomach. I had a couple on my back and one on my arm. Not a ton, but seeing as I don't have other freckling and moles on my stomach for the most part, kind of just wanted to like get rid of them. I have like a nice smooth canvas, but it was like one set price for basically all of the ones I wanted to get lasered off. So that was kind of nice. I was kind of concerned and or like nervous about how it would feel, but it was virtually painless. It was kind of itchy, I would say, in the areas that I got the laser done pretty immediately after doing it. But after about an hour, that like feeling sort of subsided. Now they're kind of like a weird gray color. Apparently they're going to turn purple and then they just like disappear off of your body, which very excited to see how that goes. Um, I'm just excited to have those gone. They don't like bo bother me a ton, but I just don't love the look of them. So I am excited to be in a bikini with like nothing 
like that. I mean, again, it's like, it's really not a big deal in the big scheme of things. I don't think they're like awful, but hey, it was an option. So I did it. Came back and I, again, haven't really been doing anything, but I did start an audiobook yesterday. I've been reading Nine Rules to Break When Romancing a Rake by Sarah McLean. Okay, so I've read this one before, but I'm rereading it again for the time video. I wanted to revisit a couple of the books that I don't remember much about because I like to obviously be able to really recommend or not recommend a book. And like actually have true thoughts and feelings about it. Anyway, I couldn't remember shit about this book except for that I wasn't a huge fan, which is weird because it's like a very beloved historical, especially by Sarah McLean. I just did not have good luck with it when I uh, first read it. And I will say I'm still not totally loving it. So it's about our main character, Calpurnia, and she has been kind of like on the shelf, but I want to say like her sister or her friend or someone in her life is getting married and like kind of feels sorry for her. And this is sort of spurring Calpurnia to not necessarily find herself a husband because she doesn't think she's beautiful enough to find a husband but she wants to like live her life and have fun if that makes sense so she has this like bucket list of things she wants to do because she's always been seen as this really like fancy lady and or person of like good social standing like she doesn't do anything rebellious she's like you know what now is my time also can we just admire this this actually looks really like pretty like the crust is nice directly into the oven it goes i think actually i should probably check to make sure I don't need like a pizza stone or anything. Yeah, no, it says center rack. She enlists the help of this rake who she has had a crush on for a while. Do some of these things with her. Like check off some of the things on her bucket list. Some of which are like kiss or drink whiskey or do fencing, things like that. When he becomes aware of this list, like he like sees her out in public and he's like, what the fuck are you doing drinking whiskey? He basically agrees to like help her out with her list, but also in exchange, Calpurnia is going to help his half sister kind of enter into society. His half sister is like Italian or something french one of the two she just doesn't have the same sensibilities as an english lady and so calpurnia is going to like teach her how to be you know more i don't know what's the word i'm looking for my brain is just not functioning today polite i'll we'll go with polite it's not the word i'm looking for but we're gonna go with polite it's okay i just don't really love the romance between hero and heroine he seems to not fully appreciate who she is and i do think at one point he calls her plain maybe not to her face but like he doesn't see her as a beauty i don't really love that i'll be honest also, got a new necklace. Can I show it to you? I am gonna keep reading that book today. Like that's my goal is to finish it and then to move on to something else. Cause I am gonna do sort of like a mood reading situation for the main channel or Sunday's video. I did get the other video for Thursday approved, but necklace. So like jewelry. And I was like perusing the James Avery website, uh, trying to look for just like a new pendant or like charm add it to a necklace. And then I came across this one and I saw that they had hand engraving option. So I got this hand engraved little pendant with my initials on it. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but it's just like very deeply etched as compared to a laser engraving. I got the back laser engraved so you can see what that looks like. Um, it says work in progress on the back. I think it's like a sweet little reminder on the reflection, but I thought it was cute. I also just feel like it's very, it's kind of preppy, kind of heirloom, and I don't know. I say I don't know what my sense of style is or my aesthetic. Well, that's kind of true. I do know some things that I like and I do like classic kind of preppy stuff like that. I guess it's kind of southern preppy. Monograms feel very southern to me, but I like her. I think she's cute. It's something that I can layer with some of my gold jewelry. I have been wearing more silver lately though, just because like it's more affordable and I can add stuff to my collection more easily. Technically, if we're going on like color seasons and color theory or whatever, I should be wearing silver because I have like a cooler undertone. It's actually more of a neutral undertone, but regardless, I kind of mix my silver and my gold at this point. So also I have this ring, which is like silver and gold. I don't know if that's going to focus. There we go also silver and gold. I wish I had anything exciting to say. Hayden is at work. I think he just woke up and is approaching. Mm -hmm. Come here, buddy. Why I talk to him, I don't know, because he can't hear me. Communicating with my hands, trying to get him to come over here to get pets. Oh, there he is. Binky baby. I think he just wants my pizza. Well, I didn't even set a timer for that, y'all. I'm all over the place today. I'll report back when I have more to say about this book and or like maybe we can start on something fun, something different, something perhaps not for a list video. What a novel idea. Also have no fucking idea what I'm doing for dinner. So y'all can figure out dinner with me because Hayden's again, not gonna be home. Yes, hi. <laughs> I've had an interesting rest of my day. I actually don't even think I told you how this morning started, did I? I just audio messaged a friend this. Not only is my period kind of taking me out, giving me the worst headache ever, but woke up this morning to Dingo getting sick and then also waking up again before our alarm went off to the smell of skunk. So I think a skunk sprayed outside of our bedroom and then our bedroom just smelled like skunk all day. So 
it's been an interesting day, okay? I also got the, you know, Wall's laser and got the necklace and it's just, it's been a very out of character day and it's like kind of reminding me of how I was living my life a couple of like months ago, especially when I was like pregnant and like in bed and like not doing anything. And I'm really glad that my life doesn't look like that now, but having two days of inactivity, I just don't feel like myself, which feels good to say that. It feels like I'm getting somewhere if inactivity is making me not feel like myself, you know what I mean? Like a couple of months ago, it would have been out of character for me to like do things, but I did, I did have a productive day. I wanted to have like a little chat. It's not even like a big deal. It's stupid. Um, just a crisis I've been having. And this is something that I would tell a friend. So I'll just tell y'all too. I've been reading. I did finish Nine Rules to Break. I really want to talk about that. I'm like almost done though with Forget Me Not by Brenda Jackson, which I'm reading for the time video. And I'm actually kind of into it. It's a book with an amnesia plotline, a romance specifically. Basically our heroine Ashley husband passes away or so she thinks like three years ago. And then she goes on vacation to the small town and comes face to face with her husband who she presumed was dead. And so now she's trying to like not fall back in love with him, but like have him fall in love with her and like maybe discover his old memories. And she started to come to terms with the fact that like that might not happen because we're pretty far into the book and he hasn't remembered anything but they have this like chemistry and this attraction that I just find so sweet like a hero even though he has been like he doesn't know who he is he hasn't known who he is for three years he has not pursued any women because he's like pretty sure that he had a wife before because he has like a tan line on his finger when he like wakes up from his coma he's like I don't want to pursue anything with other women because I know that I'm just like not attracted to them really and like just I, I feel like I want to honor my wife even if I don't know who she is and I'm just like oh my god so this is so romantic and like our heroine doesn't want to tell him oh you're my husband because she, apparently that's like bad for people with amnesia I don't know if that's true or if it's just the plot line of this book but yeah they're just like getting to know each other in a different context and it's really delightful like it's very cute small town um like hallmarky harlequin vibes but like in a great way um like when you look at the cover of this book it gives like mass market paperback you know free store kind of read and not in a bad way like it's genuinely so nice and like so lighthearted and kind of like exactly what i needed um i'm listening to that while i online shop i have just been like in bed all day because my cramps are not great and i feel bad saying that because again i've told y'all that my cramps are not that bad this time around like they haven't been bad the past couple of periods like not great i'm always gonna have probably not great periods but much more manageable than they have been in the past. Like, I don't know if we've talked about this, but I had a copper IUD at one point. Bitch, those are cramp creators. Those are Satan's IUDs. I am fully supportive of anyone who wants to like get a copper IUD if like it works for you, whatever, but it did not work for me, okay? I had three years of true misery with my periods and just pelvic pain. And anyway, I know what pain is like. This is not that intense, but I do just kind of like to take my periods to just chill. And I think that that's okay, right? But anyway, I've been online shopping <laughs> and I'm like kind of upset because I think I know the direction I want to take my personal style and it kind of comes back to what I was saying at the beginning of this vlog like do I have an aesthetic do I have a vibe a point of view one thing that I've loved my entire life when it comes to style is like preppy style I love preppy stuff not this new gen z preppy hot pink justice looking shit like I'm talking like classic like polo ralph lauren like preppy style it's something I have always gravitated towards I like really tailored pieces it's always been something I'm into like very prep school vibes like give me a pleated skirt give me plaid give me stripes give me like a rugby shirt like, i love that shit and airy and american eagle right now have so much stuff that is just so painfully me and like i'm really trying not to spend money right now i'm really trying to be good save up for my vacation and like not do anything crazy but it's like kind of hard to pass things up i feel like for so many years i just like haven't been able to find the kind of stuff that i like and maybe it just hasn't been in style you know <laughs> but i just have not been able to find the stuff that i like i feel like the the things that the things that have been trendy like for the gen z sort of demographic like baby tees kind of like not grunge style but like i2k it's just not really my thing in the opposite direction there's also kind of like the clean girl trousers and blazers and shit like that in a casual context. I, I'm not really like in that direction either. Like neither really fit me or like my lifestyle and the stuff that's on Airy and American Eagle right now is just so, so me and I like want to buy it. <laughs> trying to be good. Pepper is not trying to be good. He always does his thing. He eats. He'll like get done eating for a second and then he likes to scratch at the rug right there. Just kind of paw near his dish and then he walks away. So I don't know what that's about but so torn. And the frustrating thing too is that Aerie like sells out of things. I was like refreshing my cart and the like pair of PJ pants that you can like style as regular pants that I really wanted are like are already out of stock. And then I went on Abercrombie because I was like, maybe like they'll have some stuff or everybody has stuff right now that I like. Abercrombie doesn't have quite as much, but they do have leopard print, which I fucking love. But I think this is promising. I will say this is promising that I'm like able to find things that I like because again, it's been so long. I feel like I just gravitate towards like sweatshirts and that's pretty much it. And now, 
now I kind of want like actual clothes and yes some of that does include like loungier pieces like I don't need like fancy stuff but I want something just a little bit more elevated than just like your standard Versailles sweatshirt does that make sense I always love like a good button-up shirt unbuttoned with like a tank under it and like some slouchy shorts like I love it. I think I'm just convincing myself to buy things I think that's the problem here maybe I'll do like a little a little haul this is supposed to be a no buy week I need to jump on this opportunity I hate that I hate that like culture I really don't like that in shopping can I just say that that didn't used to be the case right like brands would put like out a collection for like a season and you could like purchase at any time or like when things go on sale now shit just comes out so quickly that it's like if you don't get it you're like missing out sort of like conflicted because I also don't know what size to buy. It's fun. Love that for me. I'm like kind of between sizes right now. So I think I'd probably size down, but I don't know. Just talking it out with y'all before back on what I decided to do, but I am going to finish this book tonight. That is a goal of mine. And then I think I might try to finish or like farther in chef's kiss. My reading challenge on Goodreads is like kind of pissing me off. It keeps telling me I'm behind like 40 books, 50 books behind. I don't want that for me you know, I want to catch up on that. My reading challenge goal for this year is 300 books, which is very, I was going to say unrealistic. How about ambitious this year? But just because I haven't been reading super high volume, I think I've read like 150 plus books. I'll do it if I just push, but we'll see if I end up pushing. I'm going to go. I will report back tomorrow. I'll tell you what I'm reading and what I'm doing. I know this has not been like the most exciting vlog so far. Not apologizing. It just is life. Hopefully things look up. My sister, I think, and I are going to hang out because we didn't hang out last week. We didn't go. Movie. We were going to go see it ends with us. And I think we've kind of like given up on that. It's something that we really want to do. But my sister is in the process right now of trying to figure out what she's going to do. Her lease is up soon. Like she doesn't know if she wants to stay here or go somewhere else. And I'm just trying to like soak up all the time that I can with her before she decides what she's going to do. Because I think ultimately she's going to be probably farther away from me which is going to be kind of a bummer but I need to wash my hair too yikes oh one other thing I don't know if I already said this about the cherries I took a really good look at my cherry angiomas on my chest and then Hayden looked at the ones on my back crazy like I kind of look crazy I know it's gonna like look good when they're gone again not that it like matters if you have them I don't think they're like I don't think they're really ugly or anything I just like I don't know she offered it I was like sure I have like really really faint like teeny tiny ones I wouldn't say microscopic but like very small smaller than like smaller than like the tiny little moles on my arm and when she lasered them I guess it like zaps the blood vessels because that's what it is now they like all look huge Huge. Like I have like huge dark like spots all over my chest and my stomach and my back. What am I gonna do when I go to like yoga? <laughs> like whatever. It just it like looks kind of crazy. We'll see how long these take to go away. That's what I'm like a little worried about. She said like a week and I kind of heal slow. So like I hope it's not like two or three weeks of this. <laughs> Lighting might be weird, but hello friends, happy Friday. Like a day or two since I last spoke to you. I have updates because I have been reading and I don't know where to put my head. That won't be weird. Okay, I guess I'll just sit back here. I did finish Forget Me Not by Brenda Jackson. It was cute, give it three stars. I kinda didn't really like the way the conflict was handled with like the amnesia plot line. I think I told you about this. Basically like her husband, she presumes is dead. He's not actually dead. He can't remember who he is. He figures out later on, obviously that like she is his wife and he's pretty upset that she didn't tell him from the beginning. Like their relationship is under false pretenses. And I feel like that's a very valid concern and critique and <laughs> criticism on his part. I don't know, I'm just like not sure that I loved how that part was handled, but overall it was really cute and I did like like, the idea behind it hasn't been banging other broads these whole three years because he just knew he had a wife and like just knew that he like didn't really feel strongly about anyone until he like meets his wife who he doesn't know is his wife and he's like she's beautiful I have to have her and it's like oh like in any lifetime like I would you know so I know amnesia is not real because you wouldn't wait around for me I mean yeah kind of like <laughs> okay well like, if I there. didn't if I didn't know you didn't exist if I didn't know that you existed what would I be waiting around for you know Sure, I guess. I guess our love is just like not eternal and beautiful and it's okay. It's fine. After that, read An Extraordinary Union by Alyssa Cole. I didn't tell you about that at all, but I listened to the audiobook and it was also very good. It's about Elle and is his name Malcolm? She is a freed slave. She is working with the Union during the Civil War. She's going kind of like undercover as a spy, part of a big spy network, and she is going to basically pretend to be a slave, working in a uh, Confederate household, obviously. And while she's there, she's supposed to be getting information from another fellow spy and he is a faux confederate soldier like he actually is working for the union he's a spy whatever but he has to pretend that he is a confederate soldier and he is like instantly very much like she is so sexy i love her so much she's a little less convinced because she's like you're a white man also like i know that you're a spy and you're actually a good guy but like i don't know if i can like really trust you of course the story they learn to trust each other etc etc it was like very very good not that i expected anything less because i really like Alyssa cole's writing i wasn't sure how this would like carry out i don't really love reading books with black 
black characters that are not uh, triumphant stories like I, I very much understand the criticism that black people rightfully give white people which is that a lot of the books that are like pushed at us and a lot of the ones that are like on bestseller lists tend to be ones where black people are suffering and I don't like that I was unsure of how I would like this and even though this book is set during the Civil War it's a very triumphant story and I really liked seeing these two fall in love like I thought it was quite delightful do you mean by like triumphant or struggling do you mean like the vibe of the whole story or do yes. you mean like the ending I mean the vibe of the whole story oh, okay. and it's not that I don't think any of those stories should exist I mean obviously like story reflects that I want to read a contemporary romance about black characters who are just like vibing and like falling in love yeah i know i yeah, don't yeah. necessarily want to read like a bunch of depressing historical fiction again i think they can both coexist it's just like i would prefer to read the triumphant like exciting upbeat yeah. stories or at know? least not have it be the majority of them or not yeah, i mean and again I, th both exist i've read both mm -hmm. i will continue to read both but i just think like if that's all you're reading that's probably a problem uh, extraordinary union was quite good and i quite enjoyed it i also have checked out at the same time indigo by beverly jenkins i probably won't read it in this video maybe in the next one but i am really looking forward to that because i've heard that that one is like her best it's like one that everybody touts and i've read other other beverly jenkins books that i've liked but i haven't read that one yet so yeah excited to read that one in the future i don't know what i'm gonna read next for this year vlog but i am starting up the video that i'm gonna be posting on sunday which is going to be a like mood reading ku vlog i am looking forward to that it's not sponsored so like i get to just like have some fucking fun not that i like can't have fun in a sponsored video but i have to like turn it in and i don't know less freedom i know for sure i'm reading i think it's like called quicksilver or something like that it's a fantasy that everybody's been talking about but other than that i'm not quite sure i think of like other things that have happened between now and last time we talked that i could update you on oh i did buy the clothes mm -hmm. yeah i mean who thought that i wasn't going to i mean raise your hand because i did buy the clothes yeah not me for a second did also find some boxers that i'm excited about because like a lot of the clothes that were styled on aries website were paired with that's an ugly car okay anyway paired with boxers boxers are like a trend right now for women like okay. striped or plaid like men's style boxers with like you know like a shirt Worn, okay. worn in public so anyway i bought some from anthropology and they weren't crazy expensive purchase anything from anthro because everything is so expensive we're like under 40 bucks so i bought those i also bought a pair of like long version like pajama pants basically a pair of long version long, long version boxers i mean that's what they're called like on the website like long boxers or some shit mm -hmm. it's literally just pajama pants but that again are like a little bit elevated kind of like i don't know linen pantsy so i think those will help me i'm excited to like get out my fall clothes too and just kind of like create a little little capsule dude stuff i can't I got, wait for cooler temperatures i know he got some cool jackets i just have dad. so many like yeah. cool to cold weather clothes yeah. it's like honestly like most of my wardrobe right now i mean same so I just i've like... just been cycling through which is stupid because i live here that's the th well, but here's here's the thing like even if we were dressing or like had better summer, summer clothes just aren't cool like they're they've never been cool they're never going to be cool like for guy what are you gonna wear shorts and a mm -hmm. t-shirt mm -hmm. way less cool than like cool jeans or like cargo pants or like something just in layers like so many options i do have better fall clothes than summer clothes so i'm trying like i'm that'll probably be my like main and or only big purchase for clothing i would say this season at some point i will find and buy some new jeans jean size is changing <laughs> presently i'm gonna wait until i'm like done with or like have kind of settled on where i want to be <laughs> when, I'm when i'm just done you know what i mean like i just think it's hard when you're losing weight that's something i kind of struggle with is like do i buy clothes right now if i do what size do i buy it's no you it's don't hard. you just don't especially with jeans you don't buy new jeans until you stop living and everyone knows that's how jeans go <laughs> no I'll new buy jeans, jeans when i'm dead well i guess the good news is that i have a couple of different sizes of jeans give I me did, some denim in the casket you know i did get rid of some of my like really small pairs of jeans but i do have like my current size and a size down which is nice but i'm hoping to be more than a size down from that so mm -hmm. i don't know i'm kind of just like you know, in limbo a little bit purgatory which is kind of where i've been for a while now like just not wanting to buy clothes because like i know this isn't my final four <laughs> and like your body constantly changes i don't expect to like land in a certain like size or shape and be like this is it forever mm -hmm. you know it's tough i don't know i have cut myself off from buying more athletic wear though i'm like i'm good right now i don't want to buy anything else because like especially 75 hard like i think this is going to be kind of intense and i think by the end of it i'm like probably not going to fit most of this stuff i actually need to buy some more athletic clothes 
I think you do. Just shorts yeah. in particular, because like I've noticed that if I'm exercising consistently, then I run out of shorts before the end of the week. And even if you were doing laundry every weekend, then I would still like run out before then. So. Oh, also I think I am hanging out with my sister, which I'm looking forward to. I think we might window shop, have a little fun. Oh yeah. I'm sure it's just going to be windows you're shopping. There's nothing I really need from any of the places around us, but she wants to like go and look at stuff. I'm like, all right, go look at candles. Yeah. And not buy any. That's fun. Mm, yeah, sure. I'm back after Taco Bell and after a battle between me and my sideburns. How are we all doing? You didn't let me fix my hair. I don't think there's any fixing. I it. was still eating while you were finished and you had plenty of time to get stuff out of your teeth to make well, yourself beautiful. I just didn't think about it, okay? It wasn't something I was thinking about was the camera. Yeah, it's one of us. I mean, like I said, I shaved my sideburns. I today, can't make myself so. beautiful today, honestly. <laughs> I did what I could. You know what's crazy to me is that like biologically, you know, we've done blood tests, we've done all the things. I don't have high androgens and yet I've got sideburns that would put I don't know, Bill and Bill and True Blood to shame, you know? <laughs> Edward and Eclipse to shame. Him. Just like they're very lengthy. That one guy in uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. They just, they've always been long. Like, ever since, like, even before puberty, I've had long sideburns. Like, they just come down pretty far. Um, so I just kind of like to, like, shave them and, like, touch them up. But I have to touch them up often because my hair grows quick and it's the whole thing. But I'm feeling very girly. I'm feeling very demure with my trimmed sideburns. Um, mm. I obviously did some organization in the pantry. Sorry for not necessarily taking you along with me for that adventure. Hayden, like, built the shelf while I was at yoga. Then I just came back and painted it really quickly yesterday. And then and I just threw the shit in the pantry from last night with Hayden and I think it looks pretty good. It feels like a lot less crammed in there. Like I feel like I can actually see all the food that we have mm -hmm. um, and we won't be as wasteful, hopefully. Yeah, I mean, just give it like two weeks. Yeah, you know, I know. I mean, it's like, <laughs> That's the one annoying thing about life, I think. The, the annoying thing about adulthood that I don't think anyone told me was that a lot of your time will be spent organizing and decluttering, and you'll just have to continue to do that. Yeah, because you'll just immediately clutter it again, mm -hmm. because you'll be, like, lazy in the moment. Yes, exactly. And we're both pretty lazy in the moment kind of people, I think, so it doesn't oh, really help. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That is my... I was going to say one flaw. I've got many, but... I, I enjoy cleaning my house. I am not great in the moment at, like, putting things where they belong. I know everyone says, like, don't... Don't set something down, set it back in the right place. That's just simply not me. It's oh, not I know that's not you. It's not you either. It's definitely more me than it is you. I get onto you about it a lot and you like never listen to me or like do anything about it, which is crazy because you expect me to like listen and do things that you ask. Oh, but you're bad at it too in other regards. Like when it comes to clothes, I'm worse, but other things you're bad too. No, I'm talking like scissors. We never know where the scissors are because you always put them down in random places and then you try to blame them on you, me. But here's the thing that you have like blindness to things. Like you you'll like clean uh, vacuum parts and you'll put them next to the sink and that shit doesn't get put up for like a week or a week and a half. Sometimes yeah, but months. that's different. No, it's simply not different. It's no, just... well, I'm specifically talking about like putting things back where they belong. You yeah, know? I mean, you don't. That's exactly no, what I you're do. not doing either. I do. So. Anyway, I, do. Um, I just wanted to pop in for a final clip. I have been reading. I'm almost done with Quicksilver. I was going to post that vlog today, but honestly, it's just taking me much longer to get through this book than I thought. Since I'm having a good time with the book, I don't want to like force myself to rush through it. So I'm going to post that vlog on Thursday rather than Sunday. I think that's a good idea. And then I wanted to, I guess, chat about 75 Hard, which I'm starting tomorrow, I guess, or just like talk about yeah, kind of my plans. Like tomorrow. I know. I'm so excited. It feels like Christmas. Yeah. Which is crazy to say because it's going to be fucking you love hard. Christmas. I do love Christmas. <laughs> Don't even get me started on Christmas. Oh, also, I won't. I promise that is, you. That is one thing I did want to say. I think I'm slowly getting more in the fall mood. And it's such growth on my part, though, to think about because like September is coming. And September is fall. Like, there's no getting around it. September is fall. August is not fall. But I used to get my pumpkins out in August. And the fact that I haven't done that is big. And I think that we should all clap. And I think that we should all appreciate that growth. It's crazy. I 
just thought about the fact that it's almost September. Like, that's wild. I know. This year has, like, genuinely flown by. Yeah. It's also been absolutely awful, but I'm making the most of it. And so I'm actually also really proud of that, too. Mm -hmm. To be be fair, to be frank. Yeah. I don't think it's been awful. I think last year was not good. I think this year has been better. Uh, last year wasn't that bad. Mm. Nothing really, like, truly bad happened. Like, we started IVF. I hadn't done transfers. I hadn't had a miscarriage. I guess. That took up a big chunk of my, the beginning of my year, which kind of fucking sucked. Oh, I know. You know? And last year wasn't great. I wasn't doing great in the noggin. Nugget had died the year before, like, in mm-hmm. the fall. So most of 2023, I was depressed and overeating, but... Yeah, but I guess my point is, like, now we're, like, halfway through the year, and we're, like, getting our shit together. You know yeah. what I mean? So I, mean, I think, I just... like this year has oh, good potential. I've turned that shit around. You know? yeah. yeah. And by the end of the year, I'm going to be unrecognizable. Maybe not to y'all because you like see me every day and mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, yeah. But, like, got the before and after But just, videos. like, go back. Go back and watch a video. You don't even need to go back. I'm going to have a before and after video for you. Oh, okay. In the same outfit, so you can do real comparison. <laughs> oh, <okay>. And nitpick. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I feel like <laughs> me and Spencer talk about this often, me and my little sister. She's starting 75 Hard With Me Too, which is so thrilling. I don't know if I've told y'all that, but I'm excited to have someone to do it with. Anyway. It wasn't going to be me. She talks about how, I think, okay, this is one thing that I think a lot of women can relate to, is the idea of having a lot of, like, before pictures in your phone and then just, like, never, never having that after. <laughs> But also not wearing the same outfit every time you do like progress pictures because it kind of skews what you look like depending on like what you're wearing, obviously, Mm -hmm. Um, especially with women's like underwear. Like if you're wearing really high coverage underwear, your body shape just looks totally different. Anyway, um, for the progress videos I've been making monthly, I'm wearing the same underwear and bra every time. So you'll be able to really see the difference. need to remember to take like a good video tomorrow because I'm supposed to take progress pictures every day, which I will be doing, but I like video better. I just think it's a better... Mm-hmm. You can see all the angles and my nooks and crannies. You can see all of your temporary freckles. That's going to be the fun thing. It's like watching the progress <laughs> of them fading over the 75 days. I think that they're looking better. Some of them look worse. Some of them look better. I do think they're healing though. Sometimes I kind of like freak myself out. Like what if I'm just going to be like this forever? I think it's getting better. <laughs> You'll just be my polka dot princess. I would probably cry. Why did I do this? I Why am I looking? I don't like looking at them. I don't like perceiving them. They used to be a part of my body and now like I just have wounds. Yeah me. and honestly even when they're healing like you're gonna be now thinking about like when are they healed you know no, and, like what do they look tell. like when they're healed you know. It should just look like skin. I know but I guess my point is like it's kind of like when you think about your breathing you know it wasn't something that you were really thinking about before. Now that someone's kind of like brought your attention to it you're gonna have to think about it. It's like an, an impossibility to not. Well, welcome to my personal hell. <laughs> I was going to to say about 75 Hard, though. I am genuinely looking forward to it. I think that taking this break is good. Obviously, this is going to be a bit of like a weight loss update, kind of, and we're just talking about weight in general. I took a weight loss slash diet break this past week, and it actually felt pretty good. I was kind of nervous about it and it wasn't something that I had like planned like far in advance, but I do kind of agree with the people who say you should take diet breaks along the way. It's not even that it's bad for your body necessarily to like be in a deficit for months at a time. I think it's totally fine, but I think mentally it can just get a little tiring after a while tracking your calories. I think it was actually really nice to see that my body physically and mentally is still in the place where I'm very mindful. Like I'm not, you know, binging or doing anything wild eating totally out of character. I've definitely treated myself to more fast food than than usual, but I don't definitely don't eat the same way that I used to. And it's crazy to see me getting foods that I used to eat in their entirety and not be able to anymore. My appetite yeah. just is not the same. Um, and that's really encouraging because I think like it's just a worry of everybody once you stop dieting that like you're going to gain all this weight back or like appetite's going to come out. But I think because I've been doing it slowly, because I've been eating better foods, I've been eating high protein, I haven't been, I haven't felt restricted. I haven't felt like I'm starving myself or like, oh, I can't wait to go back to what I was doing before. If anything, I'm actually excited to start eating better again. Like eating fast food these past couple of days for pretty much every meal, I kind of am just like, please no more. Like I don't want this. Like eating Taco Bell tonight, I was kind of like, oh yeah, Sam. Like it wasn't really what I was like, you know, craving. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to, to get back to it and especially to stick to my protein goals. I think that was one of the harder things that I was doing beforehand was like trying to hit that protein goal. So it'll definitely be a challenge going forward, but I think it'll be a good one. One that I'm like excited to try to hit every day. Not like restricting, you know, cause you're just like, let's try to get to the, to the goal. Um, is there anything that I think is going to be hard? The reading part? Not for me. Mostly cause I really like the book that I picked out. I know. I was just joking. Um, I actually might read some of it tonight. I was thinking about that. I'm still working my way through Outlive by Peter Atia and I'm going to do that for like the first part of 75 Hard. Oh wait, did you say it specifically has to be like a self-help book? There's kind of debate because I don't think that the guy who does the, who created the challenge 
he didn't put that many restraints on any of the parts of the challenge no, until like, people asked him and were like, okay, what it, what what is a workout? You know, mm-hmm. like what do you consider to be a workout? And so he started outlining stuff. And I think the goal is to like you know read ten pages of a book that will improve you in some way. Mm-hmm. And so it's kind of like you get to pick doing non. I was just wondering if like a itself. random like oh. nonfiction like history book or something would. I don't I don't know maybe. Yeah, I, don't, well, I don't think it really fits the spirit. Of no, it doesn't. The challenge. It doesn't. But that's but I also don't know. I, I I didn't listen to his podcast or anything like i don't even know who this man is i'm just like doing what's been set out i think it probably also depends on like you read it all before you know because like i think starting to read anything yeah if you are not a reader like like, at all like is yeah it's a it's an improvement to your mental health and yeah like knowledge (laughs) yeah Um, i honestly think the hardest thing for me is going to be the walking when i think about it like if i'm being really honest with myself what's i thought that i thought that the gallon of water might be challenging for me but i actually reflected on how much water i drink and it's close to a gallon anyway every day so i don't really care uh walking in the morning you're supposed to do two 45 minutes oh okay well i just didn't know if like step count or something that you i'm trying to get to a step count but oh, okay but that's my own thing that's the one like this is just you're just talking about your yeah. outdoor yes workout. my outdoor workout like a good 20 25 minute walk in the morning for me that's about a little over a mile mm-hmm but you're gonna walk for an hour. 45 minutes Uh-oh, 45 minutes is a lot of walking. Uh, good thing is the temperatures have come down quite a bit since I last went on an outdoor walk, so it should be in the, like high 70s, low 80s, which I think is manageable. I was going on walks at like 86 degrees, uh, high humidity. That was not my favorite, so I think this will be okay. It's just it's gonna be a lot. The 45 minute walk. I know that it's gonna like make the biggest difference for all of this, especially when it comes to that, like you know losing weight. But convincing myself to do it every day is gonna be hard. Not really. I mean, like committed to this, so I like I know I can do it. It's just it's more that I know that I should have been doing this the whole time already. I would have seen like just I I honestly think crazy results because it's just I just don't think it could be overstated how much walking really is like kind of the key to weight loss. Not even like designated walking, but just like additional movement in your day, like steps. Because mm-hmm. um, it's what is it? Not activity or non-exercise activity th- thermogenesis. Yeah. Which is, like, such a big component of your overall calorie burn compared to, like, you know, actual concerted exercise. So, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I'll obviously be checking in with y'all. That's what next week's going to be about. I'm going to be starting 75 hard, updating you on how it's going, and then I'm also going to probably be doing a little bit of, like, redecorating and, like, fall prep. I'm not buying anything, but I am going to be kind of redecorating the living room area just because Hayden just washed the pillow covers for the living room, and instead of putting those back on, I think I'm just going to, like, switch them out for something a little bit more fall feeling. Again, not really getting out the pumpkins yet, but, you know, getting the warm fall colors in there, maybe burning a leaves candle. Vibes. Oh, not the leaves candle. Is the best. I've been enjoying our candles recently. I'm no. not. I'm not looking forward to fall for that reason. I love fall. He, I really don't like "quote unquote" fall scents. I don't, I don't burn like a bunch of pumpkin candles though. I still don't like them. They're not my favorite. It's, it's also specifically like leaves. Is they're like... all like Bath and Body Works candles, and their Bath and Body Works candles are so strong to me now. I don't like that, like an artificial way. I'm just a very herbal scent kind of guy. I am somewhere in the middle. I will say, like, a lot of Bath & Body Works scents don't appeal to me now because they do strike me as kind of, like, cheap and artificial. Mm-hmm. But I do think over the past couple of years, they've done a better job at, like, expanding and making things a little more interesting. Um, and I'm not someone who really likes the, like, super, super, like, pumpkin or, like, kind of caramel corny smells. Like, the super gourmand candles at Bath & Body Works are my thing. Leaves is, like, kind of my, I would say, limit for, like, the sweeter scents. Every once in a while, I'll do, like, a cookie scent, but it's very rare. Yeah. I feel like I tend to go for, like, marshmallowy, fireside, like, more smoky stuff from Bath Body Works, so it's not so aggressive. Yeah, says me. I'm the one that buys the candles <laughs> to look forward to next week. Uh, I have read some stuff, like I said earlier. I don't think I've read anything since I last talked to you, so I think we're all good there. I'm gonna go home. I'm gonna finish cleaning the house before tomorrow. I really want to, like, clean my office before I, like... Sorry, 75 part. I want to like clean slate it. I'm also washing the sheets. And I got the fragrance blend right, I think, on the sheets. So you're going to have to let me know how you're, <laughs> oh, okay. how you're liking the blend. Okay. Well, I kind of fucked it up. Last time I put the wrong scent beads with the detergent. It's fine. I have determined the amber scent that I hold from Target. I like it. I don't know that I love it with our detergent. I got a different beads. A different beads. I got different beads at Costco. They're like April Fresh. And I think it just pairs better with the orange I guess we'll parcel. find out. We sure will. It's going to be a good time. Anyway, thanks for watching. Love you all so much, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!